Okay, we're taking a look at the game Men of Iron, published by GMT in 2005 and designed by Richard Berg. Now, Men of Iron concerns warfare in the Middle Ages and comes with uh, six different battles. Falkirk, Courtrai, Bannockburn, Crecy, Poitiers, and Yagera. And we're going to take a look at the map pieces and I'll tell you a little bit about what this game is all about. Now the game comes with six different maps, of course, and what I have here set up is the Battle of Poitiers, September 18th, 1356. I'll, I won't be showing you all the maps, but there's two more over there. Over on the left is um, Nigera. The map and the art is quite nice on it. You can fold these, of course. It makes them a bit more easy to handle. That's Nigera. And the other one here is uh, Courtrai. They're not large maps, but uh, they're certainly functional for what uh, you're going to be doing. Let's take a brief look at the counters. Okay, we'll take a long view of the counters. This game comes with one heck of a lot of counters. Generally, they're divided into red and blue, and there are some yellow counters too for various nationalities. Now, it took me about an hour and a half just to sort these once they're punched out. And to have any hope of setting up a scenario efficiently, you're going to have to sort them very efficiently. And um, I thought the best way was to sort them as to their unit type. So, for example, we've got blue mounted troops, red unhorsed troops, uh, blue dismounted troops, so on. Red pikemen. And we'll take a closer look at the counters in a moment. They're quite nice graphically, but this is not an easy game to set up. You're going to have to sort your counters very efficiently. Now once you've got those counters sorted, setting up a scenario takes maybe 15 minutes or so. So once sorted, a scenario can be set up in about uh, well, 15 to 20 minutes. It's not that bad. Let's take a closer look at some of the counters. Okay, we'll take a few. Take a look at a few English units here in this Poitiers scenario. There you've got a leader unit, Edward, Prince of Wales, and uh, there's his standard, which men can rally around. The top number is the leader's initiative. Second is the command range, and the bottom is the movement allowance. Over up here. You can see some mounted knights, movement factor of 6, and this is their shock value, minus 3. That's just a unit identifier number. The yellow band indicates the uh, command to which he's attached to. And, um, for example, I'll look at Warwick over here. He's got a blue band, so any units with a blue band are under Warwick's command. Um, it's a nice, uh, simple, elegant system for showing you the command values. Um, over here, on the left here, is a DM, a dismounted uh, knight. Shock value again and movement. And in the front line, you've got your famous English long bowman. Shock value, uh, plus one, LB longbow, and movement. And in the distance there, we have the French line, and we'll take a look at them in a moment. Okay, there's some typical French units. Jean II, he's the king. That would be his standard. There you have CB, crossbowman, shock value, and um, movement factor 5. Again, the color banding band denoting the command commander that he's part of. And mounted knights again. Movement value of 6, shock value of negative 2. So there are a whole host of counters, and I'll show you a few more. Here are some miscellaneous counters. You'd mark units that are out of command with this marker. These are some wagons, which are used in some scenarios. Charge markers, and certain units make charges. A retired marker. And I think the flip side is uh, the shock value. These flight point markers are used on the Men of Iron flight point chart. As your men take flight, you mark the flights on this um, track 
and at certain times in the game you'll roll the die. If your flight level gets too high, your army uh, is defeated and retires from the field. So um, overall, um, the game is quite accurate for showing you um, combat from the medieval period. Get a nice chart showing you the weapons matrix to show you which units, attacking which units, cause die roll, roll modifiers. For example, if a mounted knight unit attacked an axe infantry, be plus two to the shock or charge value. Um, an unhorsed uh, unit attacking, let's say, uh, a dismounted uh, unit would be minus one, and so on. So the combination of all these different men at arms will give you various modifiers. You get different terrain effects for each battle. So on one side of the chart we have Courtrai, Portier, and Bannockburn. On the other side, the other three battles. So it's a simple game in the sense that there's only two charts, and the game itself isn't, does not have that many rules. The rule booklet itself is a standard 12-page GMT uh, type manual, fairly comprehensive. I didn't have any trouble learning the rules. It's only about 12 pages. And you get the very nice battle book, which shows you the setup and some very interesting historical information for each battle. So overall the product um, is typical GMT quality. I have no problems with it. It plays fairly cleanly. I've only set up Crecy and this one here, Poitier. Poitier seems to be fairly simple. There's not a lot of counters to it. Crecy is also fairly simple. I've solitaired that one. But Crecy as a battle I found was not all that interesting because it's almost a foregone conclusion. And um, I'll just say a little bit about the game, the way it plays. Okay, in many ways it reminds me of the Great Battles of History system designed by Mark Herman and Richard Berg. This is just a different era. And though simpler than the Great Battles of History, um, I found it kind of dry for some reason. I'll try to give you an example. This is something very typical. You'd have a whole line of um, troops, you know, hitting another line of troops with leadership, stuff like that. I mean, the game is accurate in that sense. It's very historical. Now, having said that, how fun is the game to play? Well, I've only solitaired it, so that's never really representative of what it's like in a face-to-face -face game. But I found, for example, when you have a line attacking a line, you do a series of die rolls. This guy will get a defensive fire with the long bowman. He might disrupt this guy. If he's a fire unit, this guy might fire back. He may disrupt this guy or may not. And you do this thing repeatedly down the line. Da, 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 da. When you've got a long line of 20 or 30 counters, um, there's a sameness to it all. And one thing I love about this game is that there's no stacking. It's extremely tactical. Each hex represents only 100 yards, so we're talking very tactical here. For example, Long Bowman can fire uh, a range of 3, negative 1, range 2, plus 1, and if they fire um, point blank, adjacent, it's plus 2. So it's very tactical, and that's one thing I love about the system. It does show combat in the medieval period very accurately. But as I play the game, Crecy and Poitier, and uh, I find that the game is reproducing history very well. Very well. I can't criticize it for that. This game is very historical. It might be that just medieval warfare, for me, is just not all that interesting. I found it... Um, the battle's almost a foregone conclusion, especially ones like Crecy, where the French are trying to charge a more or less a fortified position uh, with, with mounted knights. The English longbowmen just cut them to pieces. And uh, was that Crecy? Yeah, it was. It's very accurate. So the games appear to be very accurate models of warfare in the Middle Ages. I'm just not sure if it's that interesting. Now, this is going to be a short video because there's just not much more I can say about this uh, game system. 
If you like warfare in the Middle Ages, this might very well be your cup of tea. Its strong points are that the battles are small, so you're not dealing with a lot of counters. It's easy to set up. And I think most of these games can be played in probably two hours or less. The disadvantage is the, uh, the sortation, which is just nightmarish to sort these counters and setting up scenario. Once you get that down, maybe, like I said, 15 to 20 minutes. I like the disintegration procedure where armies flee or you lose the battle, depending on how disorganized your army is. Charts are clean. I don't see any problems there. Um, there's just not much more I can say about this uh, system. Uh, Men of Iron, Warfare in the Middle Ages. So um, if you like that period, um, this might be your cup of tea. I did play Richard Berg's other game. What was it called? A Chainmail by uh, Worthington, I think it was. I found this one to be far superior. Uh, I thought Chainmail was just too abstract and uh, too simple. So to me, Men of Iron is the logical replacement for uh, Chainmail. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the game system, and thank you for watching.